Hello, good afternoon. So my name is Corporal Julie Kershane. I'm the Media Relations Officer here for the Manitoba RCMP. So I'm going to read uh, a statement in English followed by the French and then I'll take some questions. So as the search for Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski continues, we are able to provide the following update. Officers have conducted and continue to search high probability areas of interest in Gillum, in the Gillum area. Investigators continue to follow up on tips, review the physical and digital evidence collected and share information with police forces across Canada. Over the next 72 hours, investigators will conduct door-to-door -door canvases in the town of Gillum and Fox Lake Cree Nation in hopes of generating new tips and information. Residents in these areas can be assured that we are activating all necessary resources to protect the public and officer safety. Our investigators are also exploring the possibility that the suspects may have inadvertently received assistance in leaving the area. To restate, there have been no confirmed sightings outside of the Gillum area. However, we remain open to the possibility. Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski may have changed their appearance. It is possible that someone may not have been aware of who they were providing assistance to and may now be hesitant to come forward. I want to reiterate the importance of contacting police immediately. It is critical that all Canadians remain vigilant for Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski. If they are spotted, do not approach, call 911 or your local police immediately. I also want to stress the importance of not creating and sharing online rumors. The spreading of false information in communities across Manitoba has created fear and panic. Be assured that this is our be that is it is in our best interest to share confirmed facts as soon as possible both in advancing our investigation and with respect to public safety. So I'll just read it in French. Tandis que les recherches pour trouver Cam McLeod et Briar Schmigelski se poursuivent, nous sommes en mesure de fournir la mise à jour suivante et nous demandons de nouveau l'aide du public. Les policiers continuent d'effectuer des recherches dans les zones d'intérêt à probabilité élevée du secteur de Gillum. Les enquêteurs continuent d'effectuer le suivi des renseignements d'examiner les preuves matérielles et numériques recueillies et de partager des informations avec les services de police de tout le Canada. Au cours des 72 prochaines heures, les enquêteurs feront du porte-à-porte -porte pour interroger les ré résidents de Gillum et de la nation crie de Fox Lake afin de tenter d'obtenir de nouveaux renseignements. Sachez que toutes les ressources nécessaires ont été déployés dans ces secteurs afin de protéger la sécurité du public et des policiers. Nos en enquêteurs explorent aussi la possibilité que les suspects aient reçu par inadvertance de l'aide pour quitter le secteur. Je réitère qu'aucune qu observation n'a été confirmée à l'extérieur du secteur de Gillon, mais que nous n'encartons pas cette possibilité pour l'instant. Cam McLeod et Briar Schmigelski ont peut-être modifié leur apparence. Quelqu'un aura pu les aider sans savoir qu'ils sont et hésite peut-être à se manifester. Je, je tiens à réitérer qu'il est important de communiquer immédiatement avec la police. Il est essentiel que tous les Canadiens restent à l'affût de Cam McLeod et Briar Schmigelski. Si vous les voyez, Ne vous approchez pas de et composez le 911 ou appelez votre service de police immédiatement. Je tiens aussi à souligner qu'il est, qu est important de ne pas créer, créer ni partager des rumeurs en ligne. Le partage des faux renseignements dans les communautés manitobaines a créé de la crainte et de l'incertitude. Soyez assurés qu'il est dans notre intérêt de partager des renseignements confirmés dès que possible afin de faire avancer l'enquête et d'assurer la sécurité publique. All right, so 
I can take some questions. How have the changes in weather uh, impacted the way you guys are searching? I think um, obviously we're going to take all that into consideration and um, we have a lot of resources up there and the teams that are up there are obviously you know doing things depending on on what can be done. What could the significant weather changes like we've seen up there like m almost 15 degrees what could that mean for the suspects could it mean anything? Uh, I can't really speculate on that. Um, I mean, we're up there and uh, we're, we're searching and we're, you know, conducting everything um, in regards to the investigation. How is all this uh, stretching police resources? Is there fatigue, more OT? Uh, what's happening in that front? Uh, we do have lots of resources, not just from Manitoba, but outside from other provinces. So, I mean, obviously it's tough uh, terrain up there. I mean, our officers are um, searching in, you know, kilometers into dense forest, um, muskeg and all that. So, so it is tough. Could we, could I ask the same question, but in French, please? The, the, the same question about the conditions over there, please? Oui. Merci. <laughs> Uh, le terrain est difficile. Nos policiers doivent non seulement passer au ping fin des kilomètres de forêt et des tourbières nordiques denses, mais aussi fouiller et vider les bâtiments abandonnés. Sorry for the delay no, on that. Okay. Have you received any other reports of any stolen vehicles in the area? I mean, you alluded to the fact that possibly these individuals uh, got some help, maybe accidentally. Um, what's the nature of that help? Any other reports of stolen vehicles, missing vehicles? Uh, no, not as far as I know. Uh, what our plea today is that if anyone in and around those communities may have inadvertently helped them um, get out of the community. And we're just saying if, if someone did, to just please come forward. I mean, they may have different appearances. Maybe they, these people didn't realize that they were helping them. So we're just asking them to come forward. So they could be lo long gone. In theory, we don't really know. but. Um, how are you sure that they, they haven't fled or that they may be in that area? Uh, that's why we're here, right? Our last confirmed sighting is in Gillum area, so that's where our resources are now, but we are still exploring all possibilities of that. Are, are, are you still receiving uh, tips, I guess, as, as investigation? Yeah, well? yes we are. We have received, I think, for tips, um, over 120 tips in the last few days. So still, and we're going through all those as well. I mean, given the, the photo that's circulating and comments on social media, is have, have you noticed that, that very few of them are credible? Like, how is that? How are you? How are you uh, determining that? Uh, well, I think our investigative team is going through them, and as soon as we can confirm. Um, that one of them are, is accurate or something that we need to tell you, we are gonna gonna tell you because it's in our best interest. Uh, we need the public's help. How have you confirmed that that photo was fake in the first place? Were you able to get in touch with the person in the photo or something? So in regards to the photo that was circulating today, uh, yes, we have we have we have spoken to him. It does appear to be an instance where a photo was taken and then ended up being unintentionally circulated on social media, but we have confirmed that that is not the suspect. If you find this pair in the middle of the night, uh, what's the RCMP's plan for notifying the public and the media? Would you actually potentially hold a newser like this in the middle of the night or send out some other sort of communication or is it something you're going to keep close to the chest for hours and let us know in the morning? Uh, I think it all depends on the circumstances and the situation and how things unfold, so I can't say exactly uh, what that might look like. How much time do you think someone can survive in the, those conditions? Uh, if we, we don't know if they, they have water, food, but is there like a timeline? You, you say, well, in a week, it, it, it would be really, really hard for them. In two weeks, it would be impossible. Do you have an idea about that? Uh, I don't think um, I'm going to speculate on that because okay. there could be a lot of things at play. Um, However, like I said, we're, we're in there, we're in that community, and we're, we're searching. 
can you speak to like what might be going through the minds of the officers uh, that are actually up there right now? You say they've been brought in from different provinces, probably trained in different environments. Like, can you speak to that kind of experience, maybe? Uh, I think. So we have a lot of officers from here as well as outside of Manitoba, and I think we all want the same thing. We want to find these suspects, so we are working hard to, to try and do that as quick as we can. Going back to the photo, um, knowing, I mean, how much the misinformation or a, I don't know if you want to call it a prank or whatever of that photo, uh, how much of that, that like, this interfere or damage the investigation of, of this fact? So in regards to, to rumors and things spreading that, that we have seen over social media, um, we want people to maybe be aware um, where are you getting your information. If you have some information, send it to us so we can confirm it, right? Don't start spreading things that aren't verified. Um, you know, we are going to confirm details as much as we can throughout the investigation, so let us be uh, the trusted source where you get that information. And if for the people out there that are seeing things or, or what have you, send it to us. Call us and we can verify all that. Have you seen a lot of misinformation, I guess, or in terms of tips and that just is not relevant? I think we've seen some uh, misinformation and some stuff come in. I mean, obviously with this photo of the suspect, um, like they looked similar, right? So, and we want people to call us, call us and say, hey, this is out there. Um, and at least we're on it and we can determine the vali validity of that. Um, you were talking about doing door to door knocking in Gillum and in uh, Buck Lake Bay Nation. Um, you know, how many houses are we talking about here? And is this gonna involve searching garage and sheds? I don't have numbers on the, the houses. Obviously, they're smaller communities. Um, however, yeah, we're gonna, you know, go door to door, um, try and generate some, you know, tips possibly, possibly someone, uh, maybe there's something that seemed insignificant to them, and maybe it's something that will really help us in our investigation. So that's why we're doing it and what we're trying to achieve, and we will be, um, you know, in the areas doing that. So we want the, the, the people in those communities to know that. Uh, there's also former hydro accounts up there. Have, have your officers spent time with those as well? Yes, so we have um, been all around those areas and searching um, some of those abandoned and vacant outbuildings that do belong to hydro. Roughly how many officers are involved in this and has there been any thought given to bringing in the military from say 17, uh, 17 to Shiloh? So right now uh, I'm not going to talk to specific numbers of officers and the reason is just uh, for the safety of our officers and like tactics and stuff like that. There, but there are a number of resources and we're always looking at what else we can do. What about the military question? Is that something that has been entertained? I think you know what right now we'll have to see where we go um, I don't have all the information on exactly um, the plan from here have you guys come across any information in your investigation that leads you to believe that they're trying to head east head back west I think like I said before our last confirmed sighting was July 22nd in the Gillum area so, but obviously like as I'm here today to say, hey, did anyone maybe inadvertently um, assist them? Could be the same thing, right? We're not, we're exploring all possibilities and keeping that open and reminding all Canadians to, to be vigilant. I spoke to a psychologist, there's he's even getting calls from people even though they're far away, like in this area, said in Manitoba, there's a little bit of a fear going around. Is there, besides we're just waiting for an update, is there a way for people to contact the RCMP just to kind of get some confirmed information to kind of ease that, ease, ease anyone's fears? So I don't, I don't understand the question. Can you? Uh, is so there a way that any, anybody can contact the RCMP uh, for more, for verified information besides just waiting for you guys? Like yeah, I think we'll confer, like we're getting a lot of uh, people contacting us. And so once we have something that we can confirm, we will let you know. 
Matt, if this continues through the weekend, are you planning on having the same like 3 p.m. press conference Saturday and Sunday? So in regards to the weekend and press conferences, I think it will depend on um, what, it, what happens within the investigation and if there is something um, that we can update you with. So that, um, the Clear Lake incident is um, not related, like it's, it's been unfounded. So it's, it's nothing to do with, uh, with our suspects. So thank you very much. And as soon as we have more information, uh, we will be back to share that with you. Thanks.